What's up, everybody? I'm Jada. Welcome to our worship experience here at Concord. Shout out to everyone in the building and to our family online. If you are online, go ahead and share the live with someone. And remember, you can chat with our team in real time throughout the service. You can also give it any time, and we have four different ways you can do that. Please stay connected. Visit our website at concorddallas.org. Follow us on Instagram at Concord Dallas and Concord Church on Facebook and YouTube. Mark your calendars for the 21 days of fasting, happening January 1st through January 21st. Also, Save the Day for Revive, happening on January 2nd and 3rd, right here at Concord at 7 p.m. Our special guest pastors will be Philip Pointer and Charlie Dates, and our guest worship artists will be Ja'Kalen Carr and Kalante Gavin. And make sure you invite someone to join you. For updates, text REVIVE at 43905. It is not too late to support children in our community by sending gifts to them on behalf of their incarcerated parents. Visit concorddallas.org slash angeltree to register and support an Angel Tree family. If you are a new member or a current member looking to get reconnected, then make sure you register for Growth Track. The class starts January 8th. Head over to concorddallas.org slash growth track. Join us Sunday, December 25th for Christmas at Concord. Service will be in person and online starting at 10 a.m. We are looking forward to spending Christmas morning with you and your family. Okay, y'all, now it's time for worship. And make sure you stick around until the end so that you don't miss our candlelight experience. Concord family, come on and stand on your feet this morning and give God a clap of hand, clap of praise this morning. Come on, fill this room with praise and with worship. Jesus is the reason for the season. Does anybody believe that today? Come on, open your mouth. Wave your hand if you're grateful to be here this morning. Thank you for another day's journey. Anybody glad to be here this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now all over, come on, put your hands together like this. Come on, I see you. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Yeah. Thank you for joining us online today. Jesus is the reason for the season. Here we go, right here. Say, Jesus is. Jesus is the reason now. For the season. For the season. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, Come on, Jesus is the reason. Jesus is the reason. Oh, yeah. For the season, yeah. Yes. Oh, yes, he is. Come on, Jeff. Oh, yes, he is. I don't need a material thing. All I need is the love you bring. This holiday. Sing that Jesus is 
got the praise, yeah. We got the praise. And who we give the praise to? Jesus. You gotta say, who got the praise? We got the praise. And who we give the praise to? Jesus. Say, who got the praise? how we thank you. Father, you are our way maker, our miracle worker, our promise keeper. Lord, you are the light in the darkness. Father, we just want to say thank you on today. Father, will you be the light in the dark spaces in our life on today? Will you cover the darkness in our cracks and crevices of our life on today? God, Will you show up in a mighty way on today, oh God, in our lives? Lord, we are in a season right now where everyone is making lists and asking for gifts and presents. But God, right now, what we're asking of you, we don't want another present. We want your presence, oh God. God, will you show up on today, oh God, and show up in our lives, oh God, and show up and show out in a mighty way on today. Show up in our homes. Show up in our jobs. Show up in our children's lives, oh God. God, will you show up on today, oh God. And God, when you show up, oh Lord, we know you're going to show up. And God, we know you're going to be the light. But God, what we're asking for on today, not only bring the light, oh God, but God, will you bring some fire on today, oh God. Bring some fire in our lives on today, oh God, to where our lives will never be the same. Don't let us leave this worship experience the same, oh God, and bring some fire into our lives. God, we love you, God. We thank you, God. And God, you are amazing, oh God. God, you are worthy of our worship. You are worthy of our praise. God, if it had not been for you on our side, where would we be, oh God? We are here today to worship you, oh God, because you, God, alone are worthy. You, God, are good, God. You, God, are a great God. You, God, are magnificent. You, God, are the way maker. You, God, are the promise keeper. You, God, are the light in our darkness. So right here, right now, we worship you and we give you the praise. It is in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus that we lift this prayer up to you. In Jesus' name, amen. If he's been amazing to you, you ought to give him an amazing praise. If he's been amazing in your life, you ought to give him an amazing praise. If he's been your way maker, you ought to give him an amazing praise. If he's been your promise keeper, you ought to give him an amazing praise. If he's been your light in the darkness, you ought to give him an amazing praise. Come on, somebody seal it with a praise this morning. Come on, seal it with a praise this morning. Like God's been good to you. Come on, somebody ought to seal it with a praise. Like he's been a way maker. Like he's been a provider. Like he's been a protector. Like he's been a way out. Like he's been a way through. Like he's just been a good God. Somebody ought to seal it with a praise. Come on, my Lord. Raise your praise this morning. Come on, raise your praise. 
raise your expectation. Raise your praise in the room. Come on, this is your opportunity to open up your mouth and say something to our God. You've been good. You've been faithful. We bless you. We're here on purpose for this reason. We bless you. We honor you. You're an amazing God. You're a holy God. You're a wonderful God. You're a mighty God. And we bless you. Come on, church. Come on, raise your praise in the room. Like you came with expectation. Like you came on purpose to give a good God great praise. Come on. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. We serve an amazing God. And every opportunity that we have to lift up his holy name, we should not take it for granted. Come on, let's move further in worship by continuing to just speak well of our God. We call you amazing. We call you wonderful. You're a great father.
bless you, our God. Sing it out, church. If that's your declaration this morning, no one compares. Sing it out on the road, no one compares. This is our declaration this morning, no one compares. Can we do it one more time just with the voices in the room? You sing it out, church. No one compares.
Somebody bless God today in this house. Somebody give God praise. If he's kept you and covered you and sustained you, you ought to celebrate Christmas today for all the Lord has done. Father, it is that we gather in your name. That we gather to say thank you. For the best Christmas gift we could ever imagine. You sent your son Jesus. And that has changed everything. It's in Jesus that we found peace in the midst of stormy situations. It's in Jesus that we found hope in difficult times. It's in Jesus that we found a future. So we thank you, O oh Lord, today for the gift of Jesus Christ. And because you've given us that gift, we will hasten to your throne. We, we will run to you and tell you all about it. We will run to you and let release all that we will carry day in and day out. We will run to you and tell you how thankful we are for the things you have done in our lives. We will run to you and pray for those around us. We will run to you because you are our hiding place. So, Father, we just want to tell you thank you. In the midst of so much happening in the world, in the midst of so many things happening in our own lives, in the midst of so many decisions and difficulties, in the midst of joys and sorrows, we came here this Sunday morning to say thank you. We came here to worship your name. We came here to celebrate you as our source and our sustainer. And now, Lord, as we open your word, may we continue to, to just look for you and seek you and honor you every chance that we get. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for worship this morning. Oh, we thank you for the privilege to worship your name. We honor you, Lord. You are worthy. It is in the matchless name of Jesus that we say this prayer and God's people said amen. Come on and bless God together all over this room. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Let's thank the Lord for this music ministry on this morning. Wow. 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 Wow, what a blessing. Praise team, the choir, the band. Great to have Minister Gay Arbuckle with us. Wow, just... A, Amen, 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 amen. She is a part of our family always and forever. Family, if you have your Bibles, would you open with me to John chapter 1. John chapter 1, John chapter 1. I want to read a, a few verses out of that. I hope you've had a good week. I am so thankful to see you this morning. We've been in a series entitled Christmas Lights. And we've been walking through the Gospel of John together. We'll finish up next Sunday for Christmas Sunday. We'd love to see you. We're going to have one service next Sunday, 10 a.m. on Christmas Day. We want to see, It is Jesus' birthday, amen. And so we're going to celebrate the Lord together on next Sunday. We can't wait to see you for then. I want to thank Pastor Green who did an outstanding job on last Sunday. Outstanding such a great, strong preacher of God's Word. We thank God for you. And uh, today we want to continue. We want to take off from where he left off in this same passage before we conclude by looking at verse 14 on next week. So we want to say uh, just been a busy, busy season, and we have a, a lot to be grateful for. Um, I'm going to read for you a couple verses. Look at John 9. I want to read through verse 13. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made by him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, 
but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. Amen. You may take your seats. For a few moments, I want us to consider this subject for today's sermon. Don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this opportunity. The year was the summer of 2013. At that particular point in the career of Steph Carey, he was now being considered to re-sign with Nike. <laughs> he had always admired Nike growing up. They were a part of his first deal, and so he was now preparing to resign for another occasion. His family was in the room. Nike was in the room preparing their moment to present to him. His family, the agents, they were all ready for this presentation. As he opened up the presentation, the opening slide said, Welcome, Kevin Durant. And now on top of that, the gentleman that was given the presentation kept calling him Stefan, Stefan. Over and over, they corrected him, but he kept calling him Stefan over and over again. By the end of the presentation, they finished the presentation. But by that moment, he, he had felt so disrespected. They couldn't get his name right. They had tried to, to do the same presentation to him that they had given to Kevin Durant a couple weeks later, earlier. And as a consequence, he then was open to this presentation by a group called Under Armour. Under Armour walked in the room, gave him this incredible presentation, told him he would be the name and face of the brand, promised him all these things, made an offer. And as a consequence, for the last 10 years, Nike missed an opportunity. They had an opportunity to seal the deal, but because they mishandled the moment, because they didn't respect the client they were dealing with, they missed the moment. And studies show that now they missed out on a $14 billion impact. They missed the moment. Not many, everyone in this room, we know what it's like to miss moments. Every one of us know it's like what is an offer, a relationship, or a situation where you felt like you didn't really give your best, or a relationship. There's, all of us know what it's like to miss moments. And what John does in John chapter 1, John writes in this particular section of the chapter that John is trying to call us that we don't want to miss the opportunity of the moment in front of us. He's trying to help us to understand that when Jesus comes, Jesus comes to offer something to us that we don't want to miss because it's worth far more than money. It's the future. It's your life. It's all found in Jesus Christ, and we don't want to miss the moment. Walk with me through the text. The first thing we see in the text is this, that Jesus is the true light. It's right there in verse 9, the true light has come that gives light to everyone who is coming into the world. It's right here in this text that they describe, he's describing Jesus as the true light. Throughout the Bible, the light was always a symbol for God. Throughout the Old Testament, the, the light was a symbol of God, that God was light. When God's people were wandering through the wilderness, he would lead them with a pillar of cloud by day, which was light, and a pillar of fire by night. Light always represented God. And so it is, light does several things, light guides. You ever been in a dark room? You, you, you've gotten up late in the middle of the night and you were trying to navigate your way, but you couldn't see anything because it was dark. But when the light came on, you immediately were able to go where you needed to go because light guides. And Jesus is the God for your life. That you and I live in a dark world with all kinds of challenges and difficulties and obstacles. But when you have a relationship with Jesus, it guides you through dark situations. Light guides, but also light reveals. It's in the scriptures that sin and darkness are always linked together. But he tells us that light represents the newness that's found in God. That there is something in Jesus that helps us to move out of the darkness and step into the light. The other thing light does is that light gives us hope. That light gives us hope. The Bible says in Psalm 27 and 1, 
that the Lord is my light and my salvation. That when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, it gives you hope no matter what the doctor says. It gives you hope no matter what your bank account says. It gives you hope no matter what he or she ever did to you. It gives you hope because you believe that because you have Jesus Christ and he's the light, you can hope in any situation. And he comes and says, Jesus is the true light. That word true, it helps us to understand as a reminder that sometimes there can be imitations. We live in a world full of imitations. We live in a world where people are constantly trying to pretend they are something that they are not. You know, you looked at that dating app, and as you were scrolling through, you looked at that person's profile. But then you met the person, and you saw their profile. And you said to yourself, hey, look, you're not even six, six foot, but you said you were six two. You, you, this, this profile does not match what you said you were. We live in a world where there is full of imitations all around us. But this text says, Jesus is the true light. In a world where there are imitations and schemes, in a world where there are so many things that try to pretend to be the light, your job is not the light. Your career is not the light. Your marriage or relationships are not the light. Your money is not the light. Your accomplishments are not the light. Your relationship status is not the light. Your health is not the light. Who you know is not the light. The light is found in the person of Jesus. He is the true light. Jesus is talking. There are over 350 prophecies in the Old Testament about Jesus. And Jesus is speaking. I mean, John is writing to this, this audience because they sometimes, they, they sometimes put more confidence in the, uh, the shadow than the real thing. It, these prophecies in the Old Testament, they were, they were shadows of what's to come. It's in Hebrews chapter 11 where he calls it out and he says, he says, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1, excuse me. It says, the law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the realities of them. He's writing to a Jewish audience. And he's trying to help them to understand when Jesus comes, he is the true light. Everything came before Jesus was only preparing you for Jesus. That everything before, and he begins to describe it this way. He says, he says, he says in Hebrews chapter, Hebrews, the whole book of Hebrews, he's trying to prove to them that Jesus is greater than anything else. In the first chapter, he talks about how great angels are. He says angels are great, but Jesus is greater than angels. In chapter 3 of Hebrews, he talks about how great Moses is. He says Moses is great, but Jesus is greater than Moses. In chapter 4, he talks about the Sabbath and how valuable it is, but he says Jesus is greater than the Sabbath. In chapter 4, he talks about how great priests are, but he says Jesus is our great high priest, and he's better than any priest you You've ever seen. In Hebrews chapter 8, he says the covenant of the Old Testament was good, but Jesus brought a new covenant, and Jesus is greater than that covenant. In chapter 9, he says the old tabernacle that they once had was good, but Jesus represents the new tabernacle, and he's better than things they've ever seen. In chapter, in chapter 9, he says again, you had mediators in the past, but Jesus Christ is the new mediator. The law was good, but Jesus came to fulfill all the law. Jesus is the GOAT. He's the greatest of all time. Can't nobody compete with him. Can't nobody compare with him. This is the true light. Friends, you and I must constantly remind ourselves when we face life's challenges, when we face life's victories, we must always remind ourselves that Jesus is the true light. And the text says in verse 10, that he was in the world, that, that, that Jesus came to the world, that he was in the world, and though the world was made by him, verse 10, the world didn't recognize him. So Jesus, this true light, shows up in the world, and we read this through the rest of John's gospel. John's gospel is unique because it includes these seven signs that validate the deity of Jesus Christ. The, the, these seven signs, they are, they are found uh, in, in John's gospel, the first 11 chapters. 
that these seven signs show up. Let me give them to you. The first sign is him turning water into wine. They're at a wedding and, and they run out, of, run, out of, run out of water, run out of wine. And mother, Jesus' mother comes to him and says, listen, they, they, they need more wine. Jesus' first response is, listen, it's not my time yet. But since you are my mama, let me see what I can do to help you out. He says, y'all, and then, the, then the, the mama doesn't even listen to him. She says, listen, do whatever he say do. They fill up these, these, these vats with water, and, and, and then they then take it to the head shelf, and, and, and somewhere between them filling them with water and then reaching the lips of the, of the groom that, that, the, that the water is transformed into wine. And the wine is so good, they are in shock that it's such quality this late in the celebration. It's a, it's, a, it's a picture that when you find Jesus, he fills you and satisfies us in ways nothing else can happen. He turns water and water. Here's the next one. He cleanses the temple. There in John chapter 2, they are trying to sell things, and they've turned the temple into a into, into Big T Bazaar, and he comes in, and he says, this is not going to work. And so he begins to clear out the temple and move stuff out the way. He says, my house ought to be a house of prayer. And he tells them, you tear down this temple, I'll raise it up again in three days. He's not talking about the physical building. He's talking about his body. And then he goes to sign number three is in John chapter four. There's a nobleman who lives in Capernaum and he comes to Jesus and says, listen, my servant, my son is sick. Can you come heal my son? Jesus says, listen, I ain't got to come to your house. I can stand right here, speak the word. Matter of fact, go home. Your son is already healed. And by the time he gets home, on his way home, they meet him and says, listen, your son is healed. They say, when did it happen? He says, wait a minute, that's the same moment I was talking to Jesus. And Jesus in this sign is proving he has so much authority that his word can work in one place and show up in another. That's what authority looks like. Sign number four is healing the lame man. It's in John chapter 5. There's a man by the pool of Bethesda, and he's been invalid for 38 years. For 38 years, he's been laying there, sick in his body, can't move. And when Jesus shows up, he says, do you want to be made whole? And the man says, yes, I'm trying, but I can't get to the pool in time. Jesus says, all right, pick up your bed and walk. And all of a sudden, a man that's been broken for 38 years jumps up to himself, grabs a hold of his man and begins walking on his way. Why? Because Jesus has power. And he's not the only one. There are men and women in this room that knows what it's like to live with something for a long, long, long time. And yet you've seen God deliver you. You've seen God give you strength. You've seen God change your life. Here's another one that said it happens in John chapter 6, sign number 5. There, the, the people are there, 5,000 people are there. They've been listening to Jesus teach. Jesus has been teaching, and Jesus says, listen, they look like they're hungry. He tells the disciples, listen, go get them something to eat. The disciples say, listen, we don't have money to do all that. He said, all right, we'll just tell them to sit down. And all of a sudden, they bring, he said, what, what, what do we have? We got a few fish. We got a few loaves of bread. They bring those few loaves and those few fishes. Jesus takes it, blesses it, and breaks it, and they just start passing it out, and a miracle happens. A few fish and a few loaves turns into enough food to feed 5,000 men plus women and children, and they still have something left over because Jesus is never limited in what he can do. It may be too big for you, but it ain't too big for Jesus. He has power and authority. Sign number six, John chapter nine, there's a man that's been born blind. This man has been born blind, and Jesus sees him, and Jesus heals him. It's such a shock because everybody in the city has known he's been born blind. They call this man before the, the court. They say, listen, who is this man? He says, I don't know who he is, but all I know is this. I was blind, but now I see. He says, listen, I, I don't know who, all I know is he's got some power, and he's able to do exceedingly. And then here's the last one, John chapter 11. It's the final sign. There had been people that could do healings. There had been people that could do other things. But this final sign in John chapter 11, 
Lazarus, his cousin, is now deceased. Lazarus has been deceased for four days. And the Bible says that, he, that Jesus could have went sooner, but he delayed so that God could be glorified. And when he shows up on those four days later, he's already buried in the tomb. Jesus goes to the tomb and says, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible says that, 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 that Lazarus began to come out of those grave clothes and life came back to him because Jesus would later declare, I am the resurrection and the truth and he that believes in me will live though he will never die. Why? Because Jesus has power and authority. He was in the world. And even though they saw all this, they didn't believe he was who he said he was. He was in the world, and though he was in the world made by him, they still didn't believe it. There's a story of a tourist that was traveling through the streets of New York City. And there while she was traveling through the streets of New York City, she was so excited to finally arrive there. She had a list of sights she wanted to see in New York City. She wanted to see uh, the, the, the Statue of Liberty, and she wanted to see the harbor, and she wanted to see, uh, she, she wanted to see the, 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 the bra a play on Broadway, but she also wanted to see the Empire State Building. This was her first stop, and as she was making her way to find the Empire State Building, one, one of the tallest buildings in the world, one of the top five tallest buildings in the world, and she was making her way to find it. She, she was looking and looking and looking, and finally, she decided to ask somebody, can you tell me where is the Empire State Building? That, 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 lady, that, she, that lady she spoke to said, listen, you are, you are standing right in front of it. Tallest, one of the tallest buildings in the world. She's right in front of it, but can't recognize what she's standing in front of. She's so close, but she's so far. And this is what happened when Jesus showed up, that many were right there next to him. But they couldn't recognize what they saw. They, they rejected wanting to see Jesus. And the text goes further in verse 11 that he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Somebody say it, be your own people. Be your own people. Somebody understands what it's like to, that, that sometimes those closest to us sometimes hurt us the most. Somebody knows what it's like that even this holiday season, you're trying to navigate through family tension. As someone that you love and care about that you may have helped or tried to help or has hurt you deeply. Somebody that you care about and someone that you have been a friend to perhaps. You tried to be a friend and yet they betrayed you. You tried to be a friend and you opened your heart, your home, your money and everything. And yet you're still dealing with the pain and the hurt because sometimes it'd be your own people. Sometimes those that we expect to treat us the best sometimes treat us the worst. And this is, this, is the, this is just not your story. This is the story that Jesus can relate to you. Because Jesus says he came to his own. These are the Jewish people that he's speaking of. These are, these are the descendants of Abraham. It's in Genesis chapter 12 that God makes a covenant with Abraham and says all of your descendants will be blessed. That, they, that they, he will have a great land and a great people and a, and a great name. And he, 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 he establishes this. And so all of the Jewish people from Genesis 12 all the way to the time of the Gospels over these years, you, you, the Bible captures the nature of their relationship. That God rescues them and God takes care of them and God teaches them and God restores them and God tells them, one of these days I'm going to send you a Messiah. He tells them it's going to come over 300 times. There are, there are prophecies that he is going to come and yet when he shows up, they don't like the way he shows up. They wanted a military leader that would rescue them from the power structures of Rome. They didn't want no spiritual leader. They didn't want a, a humble leader. Someone asked, can anything good come out of Nazareth? They, 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 they struggled the process, and so they rejected him. They, they, they should have been the first ones to receive him, and yet they rejected him. It's a warning to you and me that you got to be careful how you treat Jesus when he shows up in your life. Just because he don't show up on your timetable, just because he doesn't show up in the way you thought he ought to show up, 
Just because he doesn't show up through the person you think he ought to show up. Just because he doesn't show up in the job you think he ought to show up. Listen, don't you reject him because you just, because he's Jesus, he can do what he wants to, when he wants to, how he wants to, in the time frame that he wants to. Don't reject Jesus just because it doesn't come in the package that you think it ought to come in. Sometimes the worst looking packages provide the best gifts. Sometimes that which doesn't look like much on the outside has a lot on the inside. Be careful how you handle Jesus. He could be working right through your life right now. He could be working right through that season that you're facing. He could be working right through the rejection that you're processing. He could be working right through the failure of what you thought was going to work out. He could be working right through a challenging job moment. He could be working right through, through a moment that you didn't anticipate. Be careful how you handle Jesus. I'm glad the text doesn't stop there. In verse 13, some received him. Look at what the text says. To all who receive him, those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Verse 13 says, and, and children born not of natural descent, nor of human descent, or of human's will, but born of God. Some received him. There were many that rejected him, but I'm so glad that's not the end of the story. I'm so glad there were many who received him. That, 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 that yes, there were those who rejected him and said he can't be Jesus, and that's not him. The text says there also were some who received him, who, who believed in his name. They, they, they welcomed him in. There were, there were some who said he is who he said he is. There were some who said he is Jesus the Christ and the Messiah. There were some that declared, yes, he is the Son of God. They received him. And how did they do it? By believing in his name. They believed in his name, that name of Jesus. They believed that he was who he said he was. As a consequence, the text tells us, he then gave them the right to be children of God. They believed in him. They received him. As a consequence, they became children of God of God. They received a new title, a new designation. He says this title is not of human descent. He says in that day, it was incredibly crucial who your father was and who your mother was and what family you were related to. He says that when Jesus came, he rearranged all that. It didn't matter who your father was or mother was. Didn't matter your genetics. Didn't matter who you were related to. Because once you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you then became a son of God, a daughter of God. By putting your faith in him, he says he gave it to them. Salvation is a gift from God. Salvation is not based on how much you've done or how much you haven't done. If that was the case, we'd all be in trouble. Because if you try to outnumber your good with your bad, it'll never be enough. The moment you think you're good enough, you'll have a thought pass through your brain and got to start all back over again. But I'm so glad that salvation is a gift from God. It's based on this fact. You put your faith in Jesus Christ. And he grants you a new designation that you are now a son and a child of God. Hallelujah, somebody. What a declaration. You put your faith in him, and he declares that you now, you now have a new title on your name, child of God. I know we live in a world that is fascinated with titles. Oh, we love titles. We, we love titles. We work hard to get titles and initials after our names. We love titles because titles, they declare how and how that we've accomplished some things. They declare that we worked hard to accomplish things. I, I love titles. Matter of fact, I'm super excited about some titles that are now on the names of three local schools that are associated around our church. 
Oh, I love those titles. Those are amazing titles. Uh, Sox started out on Friday night. They got their title. It, it, it was rough in the first half, but something happened at halftime. Something happened at halftime, and they just wiped them out that second half, and Sock got another championship two years in the row, and now they're declared champions. And then it took off on Friday morning, Friday, I mean, Saturday night again. The solo said, hey, it's our chance to stand up. And the solo said, listen, we're not going to let it go be a game. We, we go run, we go shut them down, and the whole game, they let the world be know that now the Soto is now state champion. Congratulations to Soto. Congratulations uh, to Sock. But then Duncanville said, listen, let, let, let us get in on this thing. Listen, we've been here three times. We've lost three times. But listen, that's not going to stop us from giving it one more try. It was tied at halftime. And then, then when Duncanville came out, they said, listen, we're not going to let y'all score another time. And they shut them down the whole second half of the game, and they made it close at the end, but just a few inches, just, just a little short of the first yard down, and they won the game, and finally Coach Staff and the team got their championship. Congratulations, Duncanville, on your state championship. Listen, we are surrounded by winners. All, all we do is win. Listen, they all around us. Listen. Congratulations uh, to all three of you on the hard work that you've done. Uh, but I want to tell you, there's another title that's greater than the title of champion. There's, there's another title that's greater than just having a championship for one year. When you become a child of God, Listen, all you do is win. All, all you do is have a savior. All you do is have help. All you do is win in life because you are a child of God. And you ain't got to earn it. You ain't got to fight nobody to get it. Just put your faith in Jesus Christ. And he says, you are my child of God. That's a moment you don't want to miss. Anybody thankful that you're a child of God in this room? Come on and bless God in this room that you are a child of God. Amen, somebody. This is the truth of God's Word. That the greatest thing you can do in this season, my friends and my family, is to choose to put your faith in Jesus Christ. And when you do so, you become a child of God. There are a lot of titles you can face all over your life, but there's no greater title than the title of child of God. That happens when you put your faith in Jesus Christ. Don't miss this opportunity. I want to invite you to stand with us all over the room for a moment of invitation. I want to invite you to this moment as somebody in the room needs to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. They're going to put the information on the screen at this time because somebody today needs to choose Jesus Christ. Somebody online needs to choose Jesus Christ. You've been searching. You've been, it's been a crazy year for you either way. But what you need most in your life is Jesus Christ. Maybe it's time for somebody today that wants to rededicate their life back to him. Maybe it's someone that wants to go public with their faith for the first time. Wherever you may be in this journey, all we ask you to do is take this next step to accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Or maybe you want to get connected to Concord. You've been visiting or you've been with us, but it'd be great to end the year connected to your new church family. And we would love to have you as a member of our church family in this room. If you fall in any of these categories, just grab your phone right now and begin to text that code in so that we can walk with you, so that we can celebrate with you, so that we can champion with you as you walk through this journey on together today. I, we invite you right now to make that decision. If you're online, we invite you to make that decision. As a matter of fact, somebody today, you we just want to, if you're here today and you're making a decision, do you mind just meeting us at this altar? We just want to pray with you for just a moment. In 
anybody in this room today want to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Anybody today want to join our church family? If you don't mind, just meet me down front. I want to, we want to just pray with you right quick. Anybody in the room that want to accept Jesus Christ today, you know this is where God wants you to be. Anybody this today want to get baptized and begin their next step with Jesus Christ? I see one coming. Come on, anybody else in the room? Would you check with your neighbor? Would you check with your neighbor even right now? Ask them, do you ever have a relationship with Jesus Christ? H have you been baptized? Do you have a church family? They say no to either question. Say, I'll walk with you. Come on, man. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Come on, anybody else in the room that wants to come to Jesus? Hey, my sister, listen, I'm so proud of you. Come on, anybody else in the room want to give your life to Jesus Christ today? Anybody else in this room today want to want to get baptized? Want to want a fresh start? Want, want the title of child of God? I see you, man. Come on. Anybody else in the room today want to give your life to Jesus? want to trust your life to him. Don't want to go forward. You backward. You want to go forward with Jesus. Come on, I see you right now. Come on, would you come today? Anybody else in the room want to accept Jesus Christ? You know this, this is the day that the Lord has given to you, and you need to take your next step with him. Come on, we invite you today, wherever you are, all over the room. Listen, come on, I, I see you, I see you. Come on, I see you, I see you. Come on, come on, top tier. We'll wait on you, friend. We'll wait on you. We'll wait on you. We'll wait on you. I see you. Come on, anybody else today want to say, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to follow Jesus. I, I need a church family. I want to get baptized. I'm tired of where I am. I want to go forward to Jesus. Come on, anybody else today? Come on, anybody else today? I see you. Welcome, welcome. I see you. I see you. Come on, anybody else today? Check with your neighbor. Check with your neighbor. Maybe say, I'll walk with you if you want me to. I'll walk with you if you want me to. Come on, I'll walk with you if you want me to. Come on, we come on, come on. We got time. We ain't in no hurry. Come on, we got time. We got time. I see you. Come on. Take your time. Take your time. Come on. We ain't in no hurry. Come on. I see you. I see you. I see you. Come on. I see you. 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 Come on. I see you. Hey, man, I see you. Come on. Welcome to the family. Come on, come on, we welcome you, 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 come on, we welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you, listen, fresh start, new beginning, come on, come on, we welcome you, hey family, come on, we welcome you, come on, come on, now is the day, come on, what you waiting on, listen, they already here, come on, what you waiting on, come on, come on, come on, what you waiting on, Come on, what you waiting on? What you waiting on? You ain't got to wait on them. Just go move. Go move. He been telling you to move for weeks. Come on and move for him. Come on, wherever you are, listen. Don't you let a few steps stop you. You just start moving, and we go cheer for you all the way till you get here. Come on, come on, I see you. Come on, come on, welcome to the family. Come on, welcome, welcome to the family. Welcome, welcome, child of God, I see you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on, we ain't no hair, but we waiting on you. We're here for you. We are so proud of you. We are so proud of you. Come on, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Come on, young man. I see you, man. Come on, come on. Welcome to the family, my sister. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, hey, come on, come on. Anybody else today? I see you, young man. Come on, come on. Come on, anybody else today? You need Jesus in your life. Come on, anybody else today? You want to give your life to Christ. Come on, anybody else today? You need a church family. Come on, anybody else today? You're going forward with Jesus. Come on, anybody else today? Come on, we invite you. We invite you, we invite you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We thank God for you. Come on, anybody else today? Anybody else today? Anybody else? Hey, family, come on, we are so excited for you. I see you, I see you, I see you. Come on, anybody else? We'll wait on you. Listen, we in no hurry. We, we came here for you. We came here to celebrate your decision. We came here. We came here. I see you, my brother. I see you. I see you. Welcome to the family, man. I see you. Come on, celebrate. When they walk by you, you better celebrate them. Come on, if we can celebrate that championship, surely we can celebrate this championship. Hey! Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, man. I see you. I see you. Come on, I see you. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. That's right. That's welcome. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. There's another one. Come on, I see you. I see you, I see you. Welcome, welcome. 
We're celebrating your decision today. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, come on. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. Come on. Welcome to the family. Welcome, 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 welcome. We celebrate. We celebrate you. We celebrate you. Amen. Welcome to the family. 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 Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, we see you. Come on, come on, family. Let's celebrate as they come. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. New life. That's why. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Let me pray. Come on, let's celebrate our new family members, new to Christ, new to the family. We are so proud. We are so happy for the decision you've made this morning to trust Christ with your life, the decision to get baptized, the decision to join the church family. We are super excited for you. We are believing what God wants to do for you and through you. We, 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 are, we are just overjoyed with the fact that you made a move and we believe God's going to honor the move of faith that you made on this morning. It's the start of something great in your life and we're trusting God for that. Let me pray with us. All right, let's bow our heads and I'm going to pray with us. Father God, we come right now, Lord. I thank you for my brothers, my sisters that stand at this altar this morning. I thank you, oh God, for their decision to trust you with their lives. I thank you right now, Lord, for the decision to recognize that I'm a sinner. I can't do this on my own, but thank you for Jesus dying for my sins. I thank you right now, Lord, that they are trusting you to be their Lord and Savior. I thank you right now, Lord, that they are connected to the Concord family as they begin their journey with you. So now, right now, Lord, I pray, put your hand on their lives, Lord. I pray, God, that you would cover them and protect them and strengthen them. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you keep your hand on their lives. I pray, Lord, that you would surround them with friends and family that would support their decision. But even if that's not the case, may we surround them as they walk in this journey going forward. We thank you, God, that you are doing a new thing in their life. If any man or woman be in Christ, it's a new thing and a new creation. Creation. So, Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for what you are doing in them, through them, and with them. And we give you glory and we give you praise right now for the hand that you have on their lives. We celebrate right now the new title on their lives, that they are children of God, sons of God, daughters of God. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus for how you're working. It's in Jesus' name that we say this prayer and God's people said amen. Come on and bless God. We are so proud of you. We are celebrating with you. Amen, amen. All right, what we need is to get some information from you so we can make sure we can follow up with you and stay connected with you. All of our staff team, if you're going to walk with them, let's go to multi-purpose and let's get their information so we can stay connected with you, all right? So just walk this way and our team will lead you, all right? Our team will, will walk with you. Tierra and we all, if y'all go with them and help them, please. Thank you so very much. Let's celebrate. Austin, if you'll go with them, all staff team, let's go with them to help. Make, get all their information and get them connected with them. All right, church family, let's take our seats right where we are. Man, I don't know, just stand up. Let's give God praise one more time for the harvest he provided on the day. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, all right, family, you can take your seats right where you are. We're now gonna prepare for our candlelight service. Every year around this time, we prepare for that. But before we do that, I wanna invite you, would you prepare to give all over this room would you prepare to give to God all over this room? And then we'll prepare to do our candlelight service together. We'll prepare to give our candlelight service together. But before we do that, we want to give. So there's the giving information on the screen. And would you right now take a moment to be able to 
to give to God right now. Let's give to him. You can give online. You can give uh, through text. You can drop it in the offering tray, however you choose to do it. We just invite you to give on today so that you can be a part of the work and ministry that the Lord is doing the life of our church. And so we are, we are grateful, grateful, grateful for this chance to give. Thank you for your support. And uh, man, you are helping us to impact our community, our city, and abroad. If you have your candle, if you didn't get one on the way in, just raise your hand and one of our team, did everyone, if you didn't get one, if you need one, anybody need one? If, okay, all right, everybody got one. Okay, good. All right, we ask you to please hold that upright. And if you have children, here's what's going to happen. They're going to light mine and someone will come down the aisles to light it and then we pass it on the outside, okay? If you have children, please, um, yes, amen. All right. Um, you know your babies. Amen. As we light these candles today, it is symbolic of Jesus being the light of the world. It is symbolic that he is the true light that is coming to the world. He is the source. He is a sustainer. He is the one that gives us hope. He is the one that directs us, the one that leads us. So we are thankful for Jesus. But Jesus said, he told all his followers, go and let your light so shine for others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So our prayer is that as your light is lit today, that it be a reminder that God has not only given you his, he is the light, but he's also called you to shine as well.
Father, we thank you that you are the light of the world. Father, we thank you that you've been our source and our sustainer. Father, we thank you that no matter what we might be going through right now, you are the light for that situation. We might have lost a loved one, but you're still the light of our lives. It might have been challenging, but you're still the light of our lives. It might be dealing with cancer treatment, but you're still the light of our lives. Father, we thank you right now. And then, Lord, we thank you for how you shine so brightly in our lives. All around us, we see your goodness and we see your grace. And for that, we say thank you. Thank you for this Christmas season. And may we continue to celebrate you every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We want to give you a moment if you haven't already. We know you like to capture this moment. So if you want to take a picture or something, do that right now. You can capture that. And then after that, we will then uh, have a moment to close at that point. All right. Take a moment if you want to capture this. I know some of you like to capture the moment if you haven't done so already. Tag Concord Church. Amen. They told me to say that. They told me. <laughs> You're going to capture the moment, man. We have a lot to be grateful for. As I mentioned to you, we'll be back on next Sunday for Christmas Day services. And then on January 2nd and 3rd is Revive. Revive is our New Year's Eve revival. And we can't wait to celebrate with you. And so we pray that you would bring all your family and friends. January 1st, we'll have church. But then January 2nd and 3rd at Monday and Tuesday at 7 o'clock, we'll have church. We've got some incredible guest artists with us. Uh, we've got two great artists, two great preachers. It's going to be an incredible celebration. We pray that you are with us. We normally pray and fast for the first 21 days of the year. And so we encourage you, man, to help celebrate with us as we, as we dedicate the year back to the Lord. All right? Our team's going to come in just a moment. Let's go ahead and blow our candles out at this time once you've got your moment and then uh, we pray you have a great great rest of the week and uh, we're going to have our closing blessing first second time here we would love to say hello to you in the foyer all right we have our team at this time oh for a moment I, we saw several of our state champions i saw our assistant ad kenya lark and i saw manning who plays on the duncanville team anybody that played on the team or related in the, on Duncanville, DeSoto, or uh, Sock, would you please stand so we can at least celebrate with you. I see, I see Manny, he plays on the football team. I saw him, he got his medal on. We see you, man. We see you. There at Duncanville, Superintendent Dr. Mark, congratulations, my friend and brother. That's right, that's right, good to see you, man. All right, there's principal from DeSoto, so congratulations, man. Y'all, y'all did it. We are celebrating with you. All right, team, we are in your hands, Pastor Austin. Minister Gay, it was so good to see you, girl. You blessed us. We love you. We love you. <laughs> we love you, girl. <laughs> all right, all right. Can we give it up one last time for this amazing service today? Yeah, church, didn't we? Thank God, thank God. Uh, just a reminder, everyone, uh, we want to encourage you to help support children in our community by sending gifts to those on behalf of incarcerated parents and you can participate in this by visiting the link on the screen to register and support an Angel, angel Tree family. Uh, uh, with your candles, don't leave your trash in here. We got buckets on the way out, so make sure you take your trash with you. you know, don't leave your candles. We got trash buckets right outside the sanctuary. Uh, we do believe in the power of prayer, so immediately after the blessing, you can come to the front, and our team will pray with you. And if you're online, you can click on the prayer link as well. Uh, now, as we, before we leave, let's say this together. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Have a blessed week, Concord family. We'll see you on Christmas Day.